thank you all for being here. Um, come with me, and I will tell you a story about how when I learned about the life of the Italian Baroque artist Caravaggio, I solved a mystery that I had from my grandmother Rosalia, my Italian grandmother Rosalia, that was over 30 years old. So when I was born, my grandmother was already over 70 years old and had lived in this country for over 50 years. And uh, though she had lived here, like many immigrants, between speaking with her family and her friends, she didn't have to master English. So she spoke this version of Sicilian and English. And so when we would go visit her, it was always a literal foreign experience because we didn't always quite understand everything that was being said and her, her, her house was decorated differently because it was just the way she was comfortable with. And so everything was a little bit confusing for me as a child. And, but I knew she just had this joy when we'd come to see her. She'd be so excited. But one, one, thing, one thing among many that was kind of confusing is that she'd say, you know, Carlo, which is my name. But then she called my brother, whose name is Mark, Michael, Michael. And we didn't know why, but we didn't understand a lot of what was being said. So we just kind of accepted it. And we knew she loved us and we knew she was happy to see us. So in that household, his name was Michael. But one day she tried to explain. And she's standing, you know, with her walker at this point, well into her 80s. And, you know, maybe she was four foot 11 and just, you know, the, the poster child of an Italian grandmother, just so happy. And she looked at us and she said, let me tell you how I know the name was a Michael. And she told this long story and it had something to do with the archangel St. Michael and his sword. And it went on and on. And then she got done and proudly proclaimed, and that's how I know the name was a Michael. But we were just as confused as we had been at the beginning because there were so many gaps in the story. So, you know, we left that day and it had always, it always stuck with me. So, you know, the years went by and she passed away and I, I always had fond memories of being at, at her house and remembering, but I always remember this pieces of a story and this mystery. Well, not that many years ago, my father passed away and I, I just made a decision to dive into understanding this piece of me and my family um, this, this Italian side, this immigrant side. So I started studying Italian and I started studying the history of Italy. And I had a chance to go there and visit with my, I had been working with an Italian teacher via Skype and I actually got to go visit her in Rome. And so I was in Rome with Valentina and we're walking around getting sort of the, the backstage tour of this you know, ancient city. And she's looking at this piazza and that piazza and this church and that church. And we turn the corner and she's like, ah, we, this is one of my favorite churches. We have to go into this church. There's so much serendipity with this, this, uh, this journey. But she said, um, okay, so we look at it and she goes, it was the La Chiesa, La Chiesa di San Luigi de Francese, which is this church of St. Louis of the French. Ah, cool. And she said, we have to go in there because it's a beautiful church and there's some Caravaggio as you should see. Caravaggio. So all I knew about Caravaggio at that point is I had taken two classes, uh, two art history classes in college that were some of my favorite classes. And I, they were easy A's and 20 something year old Carlo thought they were just easy classes. I didn't recognize that it was something I was passionate about and excited about. And so I, but I was so, in, I loved the class so much. I, the art history book is one of the few books I kept from college and partially because the cover had this beautiful painting on it that we didn't even get to study in class. But I later learned like 15 years after the class that it was a Caravaggio. And that's all I knew about this guy. He was Italian and he made the painting on my book. That's it, Basta. So she goes, there's a Caravaggio, some Caravaggios in here. Okay, great. So we go into the front of the church and turn to the left and there's this chapel. And on the chapel, there was a three walls and each wall had this ginormous painting all by this artist, all from the, store, all from the book of uh, St. Matthew from the Bible. And on the one on the left was the painting from my book. And, I, you know, 20 something years after this class, I was just still enamored by this, this painting. And I'll pull it up here real quick. Um, it, um, it, This is it. 
it's it's a story from the Bible where Jesus <laughs> is pointing to St. Matthew right here, and he says, come with me. And St. Matthew is a tax collector. He's pointing, and he's shocked as anyone in the room because tax collectors in the Roman times were not like the IRS, which some people still don't like, but these were private contractors that the Roman government said, this is how much money you have to extract from the citizens. And anything extra you can keep, that's no business of ours. So these were these were not nice people generally, and they would squeeze people and get as much money as they could from them. So he's sitting there with this pile of money, just shocked that this person's coming to talk to him. So, and it was all done, you know, for the first time ever, you know, as biblical piece done in period clothing of the day. So there's a lot of things about it that were in its time were shocking and amazing and interesting. And in looking at it, I felt like, you know, when someone sees their favorite musician or artist or movie star or sports star or whatever it was, I just was in awe and, and speechless. It's so beautiful. And it was way bigger than I imagined, 10, 10 feet wide and 10 feet tall. And I had this little book and I thought it was just, you know, this big, huge, beautiful. And I was just speechless and it struck, it, it impacted me so much. I left that place and I went home and I decided to start studying this guy's life. So I started reading everything I could about Caravaggio. And I, uh, one day I was driving along and listened to an audio book. And I almost drove off the road because the, uh, the author started telling about just facts about the author. And one of the things he said was Caravaggio was not the artist's real name. It was his nickname because he was born in the town of Caravaggio. His real name was Michelangelo Marisi. And there were so many Giovannis and Francescos and Giuseppes that people often had nicknames where they were from or something to do with the, their, their physicality. Botticelli means like brown barrel, and that's what was the one artist's name. And Da Vinci was where Leonardo was born, but Caravaggio was Michelangelo was born. So why was he called Michelangelo? Uh, in uh, in Italian families, a lot of times they'll, there's a there's a tradition of naming the firstborn son after the father's father, and the firstborn daughter after the mother's mother, and then after that you start picking from aunts and uncles. Uh, but Michelangelo was not a Marisi family name. So where did that come from? I learned that he was born on September 29th, which is the festival of the Archangel St. Michael, which during the Counter-Reformation, St. Michael was super, super important. And he was just, this, this was a big deal. And this was also the time when the plague was still happening. You know, Caravaggio's father and grandfather died from the plague and lots of people had died in Milan from the plague at this time. So anything auspicious was, was present when a child was born, you didn't, you know, ignore that. And so he had to be called, he had to be named after this saint because of the date uh, he was born. Well, I was, I was blown away because that's September 29th is my brother's birthday. And that's the story Rosalia was trying to tell me. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I felt, I felt like she was sitting in the car with me smiling. I felt the joy and love that she was trying to express to us every time we saw her. <clears throat> and, um, pardon me. I felt like she was there and smiling at me. And, and in, her, in my head, I could hear, that's how I know his name is a Michael. That's, that's what she was trying to say. And I discovered all this stuff, you know, in, in, a, in a sad time when my father had died and I was trying to understand some pieces of myself. And I said yes to a curiosity about language. And I said yes to like some things in me that I'd been interested in going back into studying this art and this art history that had been a piece of me for so many years that I had kind of buried. And by saying yes to all those things, I discovered this mystery uh, from my grandmother from decades ago. So if there's things in, in your life that are calling you, there's something that you're curious about, just follow that thread and say yes. And you have no idea, you have no idea where that'll lead you to and what adventures you'll have. Thank you.